Hey everyone, in today's video, we're gonna make a classic princess Barbie cake. They've been around forever. At one point, they sold the little plastic dolls that had spikes for legs that you could just stab through the cake. I'm pretty sure they still sell those. But if you're anything like me, my customers don't want just a random doll. They want a specific Barbie princess style cake. So I use actual Barbies. The customer provides those for me. And I wrap them really tight in plastic wrap. And then I jam them down the cake just to basically lay it out there for you. So here I have an eight inch strawberry cake and I just kind of cut off the edges there. There were some, I would call crusty edges where I leveled it before when it came out of the oven. And I don't want those little pieces for the customer to eat. And then I've got a little bit of buttercream that I'm sandwiching in between those two eight inch layers. You always start with an eight inch round. Now you can buy pans that have more of a dome shape I prefer to use an eight inch round and then work my way up with six inch rounds to get the height that I need. And as you can see, I keep bringing the Barbie back over to the cake to make sure it's the right height. And her legs are wrapped in plastic wrap up to her belly button. And I've got her hair in a rubber band and her arms held up straight so she doesn't touch the cake while I'm decorating it. So as you see, I've got two eight inches and a six inch round and I'm gonna leave it at that because once you get the icing on there and I'm gonna do a ruffle buttercream on this, that's gonna bring it up above and right up to her belly button. You can do another six inch round, but you're gonna have to cut that in half, like maybe toward it and only put half of it on there because a full six inch round would be too much. So again, I've got a serrated knife. This is actually a bread knife. And I'm just carving down to create more of a smooth surface, more of a dome look. So it's a gradual um, from her waist down to her feet. And that six inch, I'm whittling that down to approximately, I would say a four and a half inch circle. But I'm again, I'm doming it out. So it's a little smaller around her waist and it gets a little bit bigger as it flares out to the bottom of what the skirt will become. And again, I just have this with buttercream in between. It does help if you chill the cake beforehand when you're carving it, you have less crumbs. So whether you put it in the refrigerator for a couple of hours or even put it in the freezer for an hour, I would not wanna carve it fully frozen, but cooled or chilled, it does really help. And now I've just got some buttercream. I'm just doing a crumb coat of white buttercream to seal in all those crumbs to keep the case cake nice and soft and also give me a nice work surface to pipe those ruffles onto that'll stick to and it'll have a nice smooth finish to it. Now, I take her out there shortly. Actually, you just saw me do that. I take her out because I wanna be able to put a little bit of icing down in the middle where she sits to kind of glue her in and to cover up any crumbs that are laying in there. So I'm just using the back of my cake spatula and I'm just pushing some icing down into the hole, not all the way through, but just towards the top to kind of glue her in and keep her nice and stable. And I use a traditional crusting buttercream, but this would work on no matter what kind of buttercream you're actually using. You could probably even use cream cheese as long as there's a nice sturdy cream cheese to do this. Now this is a very flexible scraper as you saw me just bend it in front of the camera. I can actually send you the link if you're interested. You can comment on this video and let me know and I can send you the link to that. I have a few of those varying in different degrees of flexibility. This one is what I would say a medium flexibility. I use this when I'm doing any kind of sphere or dome or rounded edges on a cake because it will kind of bend with the shape of the cake and you can kind of mold it to what you want it to be. I absolutely love it. All right, now I have a large petal tip, no coupler necessary for this, and I'm holding the thick, the thick end, the fat end up against the cake and the thin end downward. That way it gives me more of a ruffle look. If you were to put the fat end down, then you would have a very fat, clumpy looking ruffle and it wouldn't look like real fabric. So you want this small, narrow end of that petal tip facing down, you want the fat end angled towards the cake. So the fat end is actually touching the cake slightly where the thin end is facing down and a little bit at an angle so that the ruffles lay on top of each other. Because every time I do a row, I lay it slightly on top of the other row to cover up where it's touched the cake so it looks like they're layered upon layered. And then I'm going in with a little bit different color. This is like a purple ombre look so that she has a few different color ruffles as you're going up the cake. And look, see right there, you just saw me scrape it off because I had the fat end facing down and you don't want that. It always looks kind of clumpy and less like fabric. So this is a small change in color, a very light lavender. I'm going around just like you would any other 
petal tip. This is just a little bit larger. And then when I get to the top, I'll switch to a darker color to give her a nice little border right around her stomach. And you're also going to see me go in with a little bit of white icing just to fill in around her waist and around her hips inside the cake. So again, she has no wiggle room. There it is there. The white icing is just securing her a little bit more and giving me a more flat surface as you move from her hips to her waist, a more gradual change in size. And I've switched to the small petal tip, the number 104, to do this dark color because I wanted smaller ruffles around her waist. Okay, now all the ruffles are on the cake. So I'm gonna go back and add a few details. You don't have to do this. I've got a rosette, a tip 21 on my piping bag there. And I'm typing little rosette style flowers all over in another shade of purple. And then I go back and I add several different pearls. And that that I'm adding there, it's just a really simple buttercream ribbon and bow, just kind of piped on to give her a little bit more embellishment. I got the large pearls here in the sparkly kind of pearlescent white color. I also went back and added a couple of different purples in the smaller beads all across. It just kind of dresses it up a little bit. It's totally up to you to, up to you whether you do that or not. You could even go back with an iridescent like spray or a glittery kind of sparkly look to your cake and spray the entire skirt. What I like about this is that the little girls that get these cakes, they get this cake, it looks so big and puffy and beautiful and wonderful, but they get to keep the Barbie inside because she's wrapped in plastic wrap. She is protected from all the cake and icing. And even if a little bit gets on her, you can always wash it off. The key is to keep her hands out of the icing when you put them back down. And then this one happens to be Rapunzel, so her hair is really long and no matter where I put it, it was gonna touch the cake. So I just kept it all to one side and I texted the mother and she said, it's fine. If there's a few long blonde hairs in there, we know it's the Barbie. So that's up to the customer. But this is the finished product. It was super cute. It matched her little top. It was absolutely wonderful and so easy. I feel like every cake decorator can totally handle this cake. If you have more questions about baking or decorating or want to learn how or open your own side hustle, please comment below and let me know. I'd love to help you out with my cake in real life program where I can teach you how to do exactly what I do.